Thank you very much for your invitation. So this uh, presentation is called How Advanced Imaging Can Help You Plan and Guide Left Atrial Appendage Closure Procedures. This is the agenda we will follow. First, some clinical context, why we are doing this procedure. Imaging challenges in left atrial appendage closure. How CT fluoral image fusion can help in these procedures. And we will see that carefully. Then one slide for the results, and then we will go on the station for hands-on. More than 90% of stroke in patients with atrial fibrillation is caused by blood clots that forms in the left atrial appendage. This is a small cavity in the left atrium where the blood stagnates, so that's why uh, thrombus formation is possible. And then migration of the thrombus through the mitral valve and the arterial system is responsible for stroke. So we do have two devices to close this appendage in routine. First is the Amplatzer amulet that you can see on this slide. This uh, device is composed by two parts. One is the lobe that you can see inside the appendage here. And the second one is the disc that covers the ostium of this cavity. The second one is the watchman system that is fully inserted inside the appendage. This strategy is a growing uh, procedure around the world. More than 30,000 implantations have been done till yet in more than 70 countries. And you can see the global activity in Europe. It's becoming more and more frequent. And I think it's just a start. For example, in France, we have planned to have like 10,000 procedures per year. And this is, you see, less than 9,000 for all the Europe 10 years ago, uh, two years ago. So we will have uh, a, a growing uh, experience with this device in the coming years. This slide just to show you that over 500 centers in Europe are using this technique. And most important is to see that in most of these centers, you have less than 10 procedures done per year. That means less than one per month. And that's very important to know that because if you are doing something rarely, you can have more complications and you are not routine with the procedure. So the imaging can help people doing this procedure because they are sometimes uh, not uh, really high volume operators. So this is just a case I wanted to share with you. We did in 2014. What we did before, we used uh, imaging modalities and especially the CT fusion. You can see that uh, this is a structural heart procedure, but compared to others like TAVI, we do not have any uh, structural uh, reference. So that means we are deploying the device. You can see there, we are in the left atrium. We are deploying with the use and the guidance of transesophageal echo, but we do not have any uh, contours, any uh, structure that can help you to know where we are. That means we are just in the lung. So sometimes take a lot of time and sometimes contrast as well, as you can see on this procedure, uh, to put the, the system in the good place. For example, you can see the system was partially recaptured and put uh, distal to the appendage. This is another attempt we did to fully cover the appendage. So it takes a time, takes contrast, takes fluoro to find a good place to put this device. This is the second delivery. This is the disc that we can put on the ostium. This is done now. And then we have to uh, control that we have the stability of this device so that we will not have migration uh, in the body of the patient. So we are injecting another time, more contrast, just to, fall to, to be sure we are in place. And then we can release the system in the patient and remove catheter and everything like that. 
So what is very important is that left atrial appendage closure is a preventive strategy. I mean, this is done to decrease the rate of stroke in patients. That means we do not have, we must have very low complication rates. We can't have a lot of complications like perforation, tamponade, uh, contrast induced uh, kidney injury, device migration, because this is a preventive strategy. Patients feel good. And we have like tools, angiographic without any anatomic structure. We have transesophageal echo. And the question is, do we need more to guide the procedure? So this is the principle of uh, the fusion we are using today to guide the procedure. We are using uh, images of a CT that is done before the procedure. This is planned CT we are doing. And DICOM patient images are used to be, uh, to be overlay with the angiogram. And you can clearly see here the contours of the left atrium and the, the, the ostium of the appendage and the landing zone on the, the device we can land and displace. So we are first uh, doing our uh, transeptal function using a predefined area of the septum that is well aligned. We will see that on the next slide. And then we are injecting the left atrial appendage and we are doing registration process with two injections separate by at least three degre 30 degrees. This is an overview of uh, what imaging can uh, do to help us for this strategy. This is CT planning we do before. This is a transeptal uh, uh, puncture we are doing in the area. This is the posterior and inferior area in the septum that helps uh, help us to align the catheter in the uh, left atrial appendage axis. So crossing the atrium and going in the appendage is easier uh, thanks to this puncture. And then you can see on the bottom the guide and assessment of the deployment of the closure device. This is a typical example I want to share with you that he's in your station of a patient, 73 years old, he's a male, and uh, he had an uh, osteal diameter that was measured average at 17 uh, millimeter by CT, and landing zone was 13 millimeter, and the depth was uh, 20 millimeters. So we uh, attempt to, to treat this patient using a 16 millimeter amulet device. You can see that we are choosing the size of the device uh, regarding the measurements we are doing with the CT. So we have measurements of the ostium of the appendage, but also measurements of the landing zone of the appendage that we are uh, doing using the CT images. And then using the fusion, we can uh, defi define uh, the best projection view to close the appendage and the best projection view is the one where your ostium and landing zone are perpendicular. That means you have an alignment, you have lines as color uh, lines, just to show you that you are in the good axis and you can deploy at this time your device. So this is uh, shown on this slide with the, the area of the puncture for the transeptal here, and also the ostium and the landing zone that you can see there to find the best working view will be with when we have an alignment of both elliptic uh, circles uh, together. This shows how uh, CT is able to localize the fossa ovalis and then we can find, it's not always easy, but we can find the area of puncture that is this posterior and inferior. And it's really help us uh, to do the puncture, especially for the centers who do not have transesophageal echo in routine. This is an example of uh, the procedure of our patient I told you about. This is the first pre-registration we are doing in AP view. So we are placing some kind of uh, fixed repairs on the slide, like this bronchus that are going down and on the right, you can see, on the left of the patient, of course. 
And then we have this alignment of the bronchus that may uh, possible to puncture the area of the septum we want to cross. And then we are going with the wire in the left upper pulmonary vein and go with the catheter in the left atrium. This is the example of guiding the device deployment. You can see the catheter going through our uh, uh, interatrial septum and the catheter is going in the ostium of the appendage that is here injected. So we can do now the registration based on this injection on two views as I said and then we are going with the device deploying the device on our landing zone like that and finally release the device while covering the ostium that is exactly what we want to do. We are not on using only uh, fusion, we are also using TOE. So we have two uh, imaging modalities to guide uh, this procedure. This is the video, maybe more easy to understand. This is the, the ball position that we are positioning on the landing zone and deployment of this part of the device. So you can see it's much easy to, and really it's for us, it's like a really, real important help to know where we are because otherwise we are just working without any angiographic repair and it's sometimes troubling to work like that. Our result using this technique is are the, are the, the, the following. Uh, in red, you can see the patients we have done using CT and angiofusion. We have done quite 15 or 16 cases in the last three months. And you can see that using this technique, we have sh uh, seen a decrease in fluoroscopy time, a decrease in procedural time, and a decrease in contrast volumes in these patients compared to the, pre to the previous one. As a conclusion, uh, my opinion is that left atrial appendage closure is, is a preventive strategy to reduce the rate of stroke by excluding the appendage. It's a really growing activity in cat labs and it will become really a very important uh, activity in the future. And the risk of complications is low but still exists, around 2-4% depending on, on centers, operators, patients, complexity. And I think that in these patients a step-by-step approach, guiding with imaging modalities, is able to decrease the rate of complications, but also decrease the procedural time and the, 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 the contrast media and fluoro uh, that we have to use uh, to do the procedure. Thank you. Uh, you will uh, have a lot of cases in the stations, so if you, if you want, I can, uh, I can be with you and share our experience. We are really confident with this. Uh, we are working a lot with the General Electric uh, team on that and I think we have now really uh, good confidence on the system and uh, yes, if you want we can discuss about that, it's uh, for us a good experience. Well, uh, so far, the procedural time is decreased by one-third to 40 percent. And it's quite the same for the fluoroscopy time. So it's really helpful. We are, for example, we are now using only one projection. In the past, we were using two, sometimes three. And sometimes it's difficult to find a good projection where you are perpendicular to the landing zone. And with the system, we have a pre-planned view. So we are going directly to this one putting the pink tail inside, injecting, just registration is done on the injection and then it's the flow. It's really easy. Well, I think T is still useful. It's real-time imaging. Uh, it's, it's good to have safety. Uh, your question is really interesting because TE is responsible for general anesthesia. 
And of course, these patients are fragile. And if we decrease all the monitoring, we can do that maybe easier and with less complications. But for example, if we want to know if we have like some kind of pericardial effusion, or if you want to know if you have some very weak leaks that you cannot see with the fusion, you need a guidance with ECO. So I think yes. Now, and you, you saw that the centers are doing between five and 10 patients a year, so they are not routing with the procedure. So I think the more we have, the best it is, especially for the, for the learning curve.